Congressman Rochester, uh, what we just heard uh, from the vice president sounds like uh, something we're going to repeatedly be hearing de during this presidential campaign. You're a co-chair of the Biden-Harris campaign, and, and this issue of uh, in vitro fertilization seems to have helped frame uh, what Republicans are trying to do with personal freedoms that we all thought we were going to be able to enjoy. Well, first of all, Lawrence, it's good to be back with you, and especially talking about something as important as our freedoms. Uh, I have to say, uh, Vice President Harris gave a powerful speech in really drawing that analogy between uh, protecting and defending our right to vote, all the way to the ability to do with our bodies as we choose. It's one of the reasons why I'm running for the Senate, is to stand up and fight for these freedoms. And, you know, for me, it's also personal. Um, I have never really talked about this before, but um, my son and my daughter-in-law um, had their child through IVF. And so this is my granddaughter, Lennox. Um, Lennox was born through IVF. And there are so many families out there who, as she said, this is a dream. And so to have on the one hand, again, uh, extremists who are trying to tell you when you can and cannot have a child, and then on the other hand, prevent those who want to have a child, the thing that's in common is control over women's bodies. And so as we look to this election, People really have to think about what Republicans say versus what they do. You can say that you support different things, but we saw the Dobbs decision. You can say you support IVF, but senators just voted against Senator Tammy Duckworth's bill to protect IVF. And as you look at this slippery slope, what's next? Birth control. And so to me, this is a moment for us to say, are we going to go with folks who are taking away our freedoms or are we going to defend them, especially as John Lewis did uh, on that Edmund Pettus Bridge? Could you hold up that picture of that uh, miracle baby again, your granddaughter? Uh, because I think for people who aren't familiar with the process of IVF and how difficult it can be for some couples. Some couples get lucky and go through the process once. Not an easy process, no matter how often you go through it. Some couples have to go through that process several times over a number of years in order to get to that wonderful point where a grandmother like you can hold up that picture. Uh, what does it mean for families and, and couples who are in the middle of the process? They're in the middle of the process in Alabama. And the government yeah. says to them, you can't do this, not for another day. I mean, first of all, my my son and my daughter-in-law, they actually documented their process on social media to help, you know, other couples who were going through it. And as you said, actually, um, Christmas two years ago, um, I had a miscarriage and was able to try again, and Lennox was born. And so she's a rainbow baby. She just celebrated her first birthday. And to those families out there, the thought of, and the not just the families, but the, the folks who are working in the, the fertility clinics, the folks who might have to transport, uh, you know, embryos, this puts a fear on them that is not, should not be. It should not be. And so again, for those of us who have the ability to protect and codify these rights, that's what we've got to do. That's again, why I'm running for the Senate, because this is about our fundamental freedoms, all the way from the right to vote, to, to the right to choose what you will do for with your body. It's privacy, it's a medical decision. And I have said repeatedly, repeatedly, I say it all the time, there's no room in our wounds for politicians. There just isn't. Uh, the, the Senate, as you know, is trying to uh, pass a federal law that protects 
in vitro fertilization in all 50 states so that no couple in America ever has to worry that uh, what happened in Alabama can happen to them. And Republicans are blocking it every single time. All they need, as you know, in that Senate procedure is to have one Republican stand up and block it, and, and that blocks the vote. But that one Republican is standing up for every single Republican in the United States Senate who opposes guaranteeing to couples uh, the ability to do this. Yeah. I mean, again, I always say, don't look at what uh, somebody says. Look at what they're doing. They have this opportunity now, and I'm hearing people say, oh, I support IVF. Uh, this is This is different. But the, the idea that we could have a national ban on abortion, the idea that we could have an, uh, uh, these kind of limits and, and, and fear for families that are trying to go through IVF, and then potentially what, what happens with birth control. Again, this is one of the reasons why it's important to have representation as well in the Senate that is diverse and reflects the experiences, the lived experiences of women across this country. It's one of the reasons why I'm fighting to go to the Senate. And for anybody who's interested in joining this movement, go to LisaBluntRochester.com. We need you. Uh, Carswood Rochester, if you get uh, to the Senate next year, uh, I hope you can bring Lennox at, at least one day to meet Republican senators who are blocking a guarantee to all American families that they could have access to this procedure if they need it. You know, I, I plan to bring Lennox, should I make it? <laughs> And I also hope someday to be able to pass the baton on to her and to the next generation. Again, this is why this moment is so pivotal in our country, because it truly is about our fundamental freedoms. Well, you know, we've always seen those pictures of the families uh, on the day when the new senators are taking their uh, oaths of office. I think a lot of people tonight... <clears throat> are going to be hoping to see Lennox uh, on that uh, Senate floor in that picture uh, next year. Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence. Representative Lisa Blunt Rochester, thank you very much for sharing your family story with this very difficult process and what's happening in Alabama. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you.